Tony Hawk might be one of my favorite franchises of all time. It's top three alongside Abyssinian and Yakuza, and it's not three or two. Okay, I lied, it's three. But there's something about the Tony Hawk games that are pure fun and capture the vibes of skateboarding while being extremely gamified, even more so as the series went on. And sure, the series did start to go downhill, not the game, but it still had that core fun attached to it that made any of them fun to pick up and play. Well, except for five, but that game doesn't count. I think the remake of 1 and 2 are a testament of how fun the games are seeing as how well received they were. Side note, I hate Activision for killing future remakes so that the studio can be absorbed into the monolith titan that is Call of Duty. Though I still play COD so maybe I'm part of the problem, but man we didn't even get to the remake of my favorite game in the series, and since I'm basic it's probably easy to figure out what my favorite is. That's right, Underground. Underground 2 might have had the peak gameplay in the series and 2 is probably the purest of the series, but Underground is a solid game and has the best stories in the series to boot. I wouldn't say it's high art or anything, but it was extremely memorable, served the gameplay well, and was engrossing enough to keep you invested. It was fun to have a reason to go to places and do sick skate tricks and it gave some life to the game. But that's not what the video is about. I'm not here to review the game or the story or anything like that. If you want that, Running Shine did an amazing review of the game and I highly recommend that video if that's what you want. You see, for this video, I want to take a look at what I feel is a big part of what made the story work as well as it did, and what's lacking from the other games now that I'm thinking about it. A villain. I don't think there's a villain as hated as this character. And I'm looking at this like a ratio. I guarantee this character has no defenders and I don't see how he could. Yep, it's Eric Sparrow, the devil in a skin suit. It might be hyperbolic to say that, but I really believe it. I'm going to be looking at Eric's involvement in the story and talk about what makes him such a good villain in my eyes. It's been a while since I've done a longer video so I might get rambly and I'm definitely going to be reaching more often than not, but it's not the fun with looking too deep into games you liked as a kid. No, one last thing before I really start. If you do end up enjoying the video, be sure to like and subscribe and all that YouTube stuff. I heard it helps us out so I really appreciate that. Okay, okay, let's get started. The game starts off with Eric needing your help because the local friendly neighborhood drug dealers take his skateboard and throw it onto the roof. He needs you to do it because he apparently busted his knee which I'm pretty sure is a lie. Literally the next mission you ask him how his knee is and he dismisses it challenging you to a skate off where instead he gets mad when you beat him. He could have got on the roof himself but it's easy to make you do the hard work while he gets the reward. You don't get anything by climbing the roof and getting his skateboard back, he does. Not to mention that it's a pretty dangerous stunt to be jumping from roof to roof. Sure, this is what a friend would do, but in hindsight, this is something Eric tends to do throughout the game's story. Have you do all the hard work while he reaps all the rewards and benefits from it. But that's the thing, it starts off small, but when it starts building up to bigger and bigger things as he screws you over more and more, he always falls back on that's just how he is or that's how things are. He makes it feel like it's your fault and you should have known better if you call him out on it and since he seems to be your only friend, you accept it. But I'm jumping the gun, that's for later. Chad Muska visits and has a skate demo and Eric shows off his hating nature. He doesn't comment at all on the actual skating and instead focuses on Chad Muska's flexing after the demo. Eric remarks that all he did was pop a couple of grinds and became famous off of it, severely downplaying the work Chad Muska did. It's interesting because this is the first and I think only time Eric shows his motivation. He kinda does at the end. All he cares about is money and fame. Skateboarding doesn't even seem to matter too much to him. Like I don't think he would be skating if he didn't think it would make him big. And this is the Tony Hawk world after all, skating is probably the number one way to make it big. But it does make sense in some way. He and MC grew up in this crappy Jersey neighborhood dealing with drug dealers and gangs and the weird skate shop owner who right next to a gravestone maker? They don't even go to school like that. It feels like the two are drifting aimlessly in the wind until Muska shows up. It makes sense that Eric wants a life way better than the one he lives now, one of no running from drug dealers and no ambition. They could lead to somewhere else, it doesn't seem like he has parents that care, but they don't. And I think I have an idea why. Eric needs someone to leech off of or just to be with, and all he has is the MC, a character who seems to be okay with the life he's living. Sure he thinks the place is a dump, but it's his home and he feels like there are still good spots here. This is even more clear later when he goes back to New Jersey and Peralta when he has nothing else. His solo skating starts at home, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Again. Eric won't take the steps himself to have a better life because his buddy doesn't want to do that. He doesn't have the confidence when it does become clear that he does have skating talent. You can argue that because he's been with MC who was simply better than him, he had no idea how good he was himself, but I'm not buying it. 
Where was I? Uh, MC talks to Stacey Peralta about getting a sponsorship after impressing Muska. Again, it's interesting how the MC or even Eric don't think to do this until Muska tells them they should pursue it. They live right down the street from him and there are other people around here sponsored by Peralta. Which goes back to my previous point that MC doesn't really have higher aspirations past dude skating and Eric is a coward. And it is kind of weird that Eric gets to ride your coattail. At this point in the game, the MC has to do different tasks to get noticed by Peralta and Eric doesn't help at all. In fact, this culminates in the MC choosing to get skateboard gear back from the very drugged out and very dangerous drug dealers. And Eric just watches, like, come on, run some distractions or something, you dick. You got a skateboard, you can ride faster than they can run. Do a butt slap or something, they won't catch you, I promise. And when you do get the gear, Eric is magically there, probably using you as a distraction and a cruel twist of fate. MC wonders what he's doing and Eric's just here to mess things up for pettiness, I guess. He blows up the drug dealer's car and revels in the madness, uh, yelling about it. Which is weird because neither of you knew you were going to have to leave New Jersey, so this could have been really bad because, again, they live next door to the drug dealers. They're dangerous and will probably come through your window and shank you. And the MC was right next to Eric, he's guilty by proxy. Even if MC wasn't there, I guarantee the drug dealers would still beat the brakes off of MC because they're friends. It's short-sighted and dumb and highlights another issue with Eric. He's extremely rash and does shit without thinking for even a second about the consequences. And the worst part about this is that it takes until the end of the game for him to even answer for the things that he's done. In fact, you're always on the ass end of the crap which breeds even more hatred for Eric. Eric is literally the only person in the game that screws you and it's made worse because half the time I legitimately can't tell if he's doing it on purpose or not. Like there's stuff later that's obviously premeditated but then there's this car bombing that's more of a rash kid without a filter. Anyway to no one's surprise the drug dealers find out it was Eric because obviously. And of course the MC has to help him get out of Jersey. It brings you back to reality after the high of Stacey Peralta noticing you and asking you for a skate park. Eric takes your thing and instantly turns the spotlight to himself. At the very least, it is good that your goals align here. He needs to get out of town and you need to skate somewhere that isn't local, so I guess it's fine. Some shenanigans happen, he gets kidnapped and you save him and do some out of control violence. Eric is already on the train and sort of lazily yells at you to get on. You almost don't make it and you definitely would have died if you didn't get on. So Eric faces some consequences but it doesn't matter. No one talks about this little adventure and the drug dealers certainly don't care when either of you go back to New Jersey. They probably OD'd or did some other trench coat activities. We're finally in New York and Eric doesn't do much here. He's probably talking to his cousin about staying there and mooching off of him. Now that I think about it, Eric gave his cousin zero heads up about him and a friend showing up to stay over. Who won't Eric take advantage of? This is very minor and not really related to Eric until way later but I like to think that this game takes place over a longer time period than it seems. Like it's easy to think it's all in one or so days and some of the areas in the story probably are but it's cooler to me and makes the story better. For example, I felt like they were in New York for at least a couple of weeks getting a lay of the land and meeting people to help them out. Anyway, you meet some local skaters who can help you film a part and Eric is already ready to start a fight with them. You guys could have really been set back if you couldn't get these guys to let you use their camera and that's just more proof of Eric being a rash hothead. Eventually the MC gets ready to film a really sick skate part with a flaming car and oh man you had to be there. Peralta loves it and immediately signs you, even giving you a way to go to Tampa for a competition. That's how much faith he has in you. Oh and Eric comes along. I don't think he filmed the part and Peralta doesn't acknowledge him but I guess he can just come along and also participate in the competition? It seems that anyone can join so I guess that's not a problem. But still, he's reaping all the benefits of all the work that you've been doing. He doesn't even show appreciation for it. Just a simple thank you could have gone a long way but I guess the MC is kinda used to it at this point. They get to Tampa for once you get screwed over and it's not because of Eric. It's not really anyone's fault, the cops just really suck so I guess it's their fault. Good thing I made the default character, this could have been really bad. You have to do a bunch of errands for the cops and Eric has to sit in jail. I'm surprised though, I could easily see Eric volunteering your services so you guys could get out of jail but nope. The cop seems to be really into you. Look man, I, I'm not that into you. I think this might have been because Tampa is where Eric first steps into the antagonist role and purposely screws you over and the writers wanted us to still see him somewhat as a friend until that point and volunteering you would be too flagrant. You get Eric out of jail and instead of letting it go and heading to Tampa Am, he ropes you into screwing over the mayor which leads to a cop chase where they're only after you. I mean you should have tried to reason with Eric but what was Eric thinking? Well this was part of his master plan. While you were running from the cops, Eric signs you guys up for the Tampa Am. Except just kidding, he only signs himself up and leaves you in the dust. He expresses his intent to win the Am and if you read between the lines, he knows you'll beat him and steal the spotlight so he betrays you. It's kind of funny because I wonder what Peralta would have thought if you didn't get into the comp. He spent money and loaned the bus so that MC could enter the Am and Eric ruined it out of fear and jealousy. Eric doesn't care who he screws over in his quest to the top, truly the modern day Griffith. 
He tries to smooth it over with you and pieces out, leaving you to find your own way into the competition. Which is another thing, if it really was a mistake, he would help you, right? Nah, he's smug about it and isn't even really sorry. I hate Eric, man. It takes an act of God, aka Tony Hawk, to get in and you smoke Eric. He's not even happy for you and instead gets all pissy again because he can't be happy unless he's the one winning. Who needs enemies when you have friends like this? Alright, so Eric kind of pieces out here and doesn't show up until halfway through San Diego as the new skater picked up. Eric's still pissy because he probably had to work to be on the team. He expected you to bring him along, but you didn't even really have a chance to. It is important to note that again, this has to mean that Eric does have the talent and skill to make it big, but he's too caught up in trying to be better than the MC that it makes his road so much harder. He makes it seem like if the MC gets big, then he won't be able to, which makes no sense. If he was cool and was an actual friend, he probably would have been brought into the team together with the MC because one more time, he's actually good at skating. He doesn't do anything in San Diego other than that, but based on what the team manager says, Eric performed well at the demo too because he gets a ticket to Hawaii as well, further proving that he is a good skater and if you're counting, that's the third time I said that. Ah, Hawaii. The setup for the second biggest betrayal in the game, but the most notable. You all are here to get some gnarly footage for a skate part and Eric actually gets some good footage of himself skating. MC even remarks at how good it is. Eric then asks what kind of footage the MC is getting. The MC panics and lies about finding a super sick secret spot that he's going to get footage at. And you can see Eric immediately go into panic mode at the mention of this. He clearly believes you and is worried that again, he'll be upstaged. He's making the same faces when the dealers found out he was the one who blew up the car. Looking way too deep into it, he probably feels that if MC films this part, his chances of money and fame will disappear. He quickly composes himself and tells the MC that if he needs a filmer, he's got his back, which is obviously a lie and you just know that he's plying something. He can't just be happy with his good part, can he? MC's lie does screw him because when he finds the infamous hotel spot, he calls Eric, partly because who else would he call? And probably because he wants to prove that he did find a good spot. It does make me wonder though, where were the filmers on the team? I, I know they have filmers. Did no one else offer to film his part? I guess you're an amateur on the team, but Eric got someone to film his part. Or maybe he just set the camera down and did it, I don't know. I can't see the footage on Eric's camera too well. Anyway, Eric seems to show concern because it is pretty dangerous and tries to get you to do less dangerous stuff, but considering what happens later, I think he was just saving that part for himself. And so the most iconic scene in the whole series, you pull off the ultimate trick. A McTwist over a helicopter down a 40 foot roof gap. Even Eric is in awe and proclaims it to be the best thing ever filmed. He's so caught up in the moment and for once, he seems to just love skating. Too bad it doesn't last that long because it's time for Vancouver. Ugh. Eric talks about how this is going to be the best night of their lives and says he needs to get the footage to Jay. It's crazy how he can sit there and lie to the MC so easily knowing full well what he's going to do. MC finally makes it to the Slam Jam competition and he finds out that Eric never gave the editors MC's Hawaii footage. Like, none of it. MC isn't even in the part, which again feels like negligence on the team. How did they not question why their up and coming amateur didn't have a part in the video? But either way, Eric steals your footage in the Hawaii roof gap, becoming a new pro on the team. I've seen people believe that Eric uses your footage and claims that it's him, which doesn't make sense because you can make your character wildly different in looks from Eric, so it would be impossible for him to pass that footage off as his own. What I think actually happened is that he went back and filmed himself jumping the gap himself. When he talked to the other pro, he doesn't mention the helicopter or the McTwist, so I really think Eric has footage of he himself doing it. He's proven that he can do it and it's probably a lot easier than editing the footage because I don't even think he could pull that off. To me that's way more malicious, like Tim, you're hating that hard that you can't even let me rock a little? We could have shared the spot, man. You could have asked MC and he probably would have agreed. It's scummy and he keeps the footage because everyone would be in awe of the MC if they saw the McTwist over the helicopter. Eric shows zero remorse, offering a lazy excuse, but we know he has it on him. He's probably hiding it on purpose, but he doesn't care. He's too wrapped up in his newfound fame to care and he slithers out like the snake he is. You work your way into the pro comps and go head to head against Eric again. This is the first time where we can really see Eric's delusions. He claims that you can't beat his score or match his lines and we're never good even though he's been proven demonstrably wrong, which is really interesting. What I think happened is that Eric probably introduced MC to skating or at the very least was better than him when they were younger. He was probably even nice to him back then. However it happened, I believe because of a difference in motivation and drive, the MC shoots past Eric in terms of skill and talent. This definitely pissed Eric off and continues to piss him off considering his reaction every time he loses to you. So he clings to his high when he was better and it gives him this unearned cockiness that is grating and extremely annoying. Anyway, you smoke him as usual and become a pro yourself. 
MC almost gives up on Eric and plans to focus on himself, but Eric manages to convince everyone that your part isn't even real and is off to Moscow to be the new best pro. He's won, but you find out there's not any money in a pro board and work your way into a shoe deal, and as a side effect, you're off to Moscow too to have to deal with Eric again. You get to Moscow and Eric tries to make amends, which the MC readily accepts for some reason. I guess he just doesn't want to deal with the BS and it's easier to be on Eric's good side since he will sabotage you regardless. Maybe it'll make him go easier, but we know that's not true. It just makes it easier for him to rope you into stupid shit. To me, it rings hollow anyway because he doesn't give you the footage back. He doesn't mean the crap that he's spewing and it's clear. Side note, I think he's a pyro. He torches action figures, blows up card, and throws Molotovs at you. He's actually mental. Anyway, he even wonders why you're avoiding him, which is laughable. He keeps trying to smooth things over with you and it's so shallow. I don't think MC believes him either, but it's just going along with it because it's better not to let Eric get under your skin. You two do a demo together and it's of course amazing because you're both amazing skaters. Eric celebrates and proclaims that you both should have a rager, setting the stage for, in my opinion, the biggest betrayal and F you in the game. And the worst part is that I can't tell if Eric planned it out or he took advantage of a reckless accident. So Eric gets wasted and hops into a tank and drives it. MC hops in two to stop it, but it's too late. Eric hops out and falls off and when the tank crashes, he runs off, leaving the MC to be stuck in the tank. You get arrested and Eric makes up a lie that it was all the MC's idea and he tried to stop you, not even saying that he was in the tank. Here's where my tinfoil hat comes out. When Eric goes to blame you, he sounds super sober, so I wonder if he was even drunk to begin with, but he was drinking from the bottle and there's no way you could have predicted that you would have got trapped, so it was probably an accident. Either way, this is the big downfall of your character and it's thanks to Eric's reckless actions that this happens. You're the one dealing with the fallout again and it's a huge one this time. It doesn't even only affect you. Since you dropped from the team, the team manager strongly suggests that your parents pay for the damages, which aren't light. You probably pay a lot of it, but that's still a burden on them. If not the money, then the unbelievable anxiety that comes with their kid being locked up in a foreign country, and that country being Russia, that's definitely on the lower end of foreign countries you want to be locked up in. The MC is just lucky that his life wasn't completely over from this seeing as the American embassy frees him eventually, but he still has to find his way home with no money. And to no one's surprise, Eric couldn't give less of a shit. There's a lot of time in between the MC getting locked up and coming back and Eric manages to propel the best new pro status he's yanked from the MC to become uber successful. Like he's won at life at this point. He has his own company, is a multi-millionaire, and has all the fame that he can ask for. And yet, he gets word that you finally make it back home and goes to gloat. You don't budge and he throws in a few more jabs and leaves. The MC finds himself in what skating is all about and makes a video showing this off. And man, Eric must have done a number on the skate scene because so many pros want to help you because it's seen as a breath of fresh air. Even Chad Musk is here. And it makes sense, Eric doesn't give a shit about skating and just likes the benefits that come with it. He skates for money and nothing else and that has to permeate in everything he does. Considering he's super popular and speaks to the kids and such, it's probably impacted the skate world in ways we haven't seen. And it's working for him. But still, still he sees the MC is doing extremely well in his own lane and instead of letting him rock and being happy with the copious amount of success he has, he goes and confronts the MC one last time. He has to be self-destructing, there's no reason for him to do this. This can only end badly for him, but he still barrels towards it because he just can't let the MC do well. At this point, there's nothing he can do to stop the MC from making it big. That ship has sailed, so he clings to the one last thing he has over you, the Hawaii footage, and uses that to goad you into one last competition, one last desperate chance to definitively prove that he's better than you in skating, and he loses. Despite everything that he's done to get a leg up on you, he loses and he breaks down, hurling insults at you, claiming he's better than you, but we all know that isn't true. It's been shown time and time again. It's not luck, it's literally a skill difference. And that ends Eric's story, being mentally and probably unable to truly enjoy success knowing that the MC is better than him, as a skater and as a person. And yeah, I know he shows up in the other games, but I don't really count them as canon. The way I see it, never saw saw the hatred for Eric and really lean into that, making him the butt of the joke whenever they could. For example, they make him seem like a bad skater and he's a lot less toothless than he was in Underground. Also, he doesn't have the fame and stuff that he had from Thug. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love seeing Eric getting dunked on, but it's not the same Eric Sparrow in those games, if that makes sense. Also, kind of similarly, while I like the alternate ending where you deck him, I don't like how you're stooping to his level. It's kind of out of your character to know that you're skating due to talking, so I see it more as a nice daydream. So yeah, that's how I feel about those before you, you know, make a comment about it. I think the biggest thing that makes Eric Sparrow work as a villain is that he's grounded in reality enough where you could reasonably meet someone like him. But just like everything else in Tony Hawk, it's cranked up to 11. 
He takes every opportunity to screw us over and rarely get shit for it. It's true to life, but extremely frustrating. As the player, we have an implicit trust in him because he's the first person we meet in the game. He gives us the goal of meeting Muska, he's allegedly a friend, and even gives us a tutorial to new mechanic. Tutorial roles tend to be given by either the omniscient game system slash world or by someone we can more than likely trust. So when Eric betrays the character, he's betraying us. And it's doubled because the main character is our self-insert. We're supposed to be but this I'm character more broke. or less. Sure, we don't have dialogue options, but we control a lot of things about our character. How we look, the clothes we wear, our name, or even the tricks and stance we have. All of these serve the player to have full control over the skater, which builds an attachment to them. If they get screwed over, we feel that, and Eric is the number one opposition. Another thing I want to touch on is that Eric as an antagonist is a unique archetype that I'm not sure I've seen in other games. Actually, that does kind of happen a lot in Live Alive now that I think about it. He's a childhood, quote, friend that immediately betrays you as soon as the opportunity of grandeur arises. Eric has a unique position of knowing you really well, and he for sure takes advantage of that as I've shown. You know, I don't think Eric even liked the MC. Maybe when they were kids or something outside of the scope of this game, but not here. The game immediately starts with Eric making fun of you and getting pissy when he proves you're more talented than him. And you can say that's just Bance and that's how friends act. A, he's never really shown that he sees you as a friend except for times when he uses you. And B, if this is how your friendship is, listen to the good YouTube man and find better friends. Don't do that to yourself, you're better than that. Probably, I don't know you. There's no healthy competition that makes you both strive to be better. Eric wants to bury you for no discernible reason. A man who locks you up overseas without a shred of remorse is a super villain you cannot change my mind. The hot take, I know. It's like if Gary Oak actively preyed on your downfall. Actually, the antagonist I can think of that comes close to Eric in terms of what they were doing is Gary from Bully. Both are manipulative guys who take advantage of people who consider them a friend. They're both more grounded, but at least in Gary's case, there's a reason he is the way he is, sort of. Or at the very least, it's touched on. He's in a terrible environment too with Bullsworth and has no one he would probably consider a friend. Also, he got what was coming to him that wasn't just a moral and emotional victory, so the hatred of him had a bigger release. And let's face it, Jimmy doesn't give a good first impression. He's violent and quick to jump to conclusions and has slight anger issues to boot. Plus, he's kind of a dick. I get how Gary probably saw him as a person he could take advantage of, even though Jimmy was way more than meets the eye. Meanwhile, the MC of Thug did literally nothing wrong. He's a good guy and helps out wherever he can. He doesn't complain about it and just does it. He has a real passion for what he does and it radiates in everything. Overall, a great guy and a role model who deserved the fame that Eric stole from him, even if MC doesn't care about that. His only crime was being better than Eric. <laughs> I don't know where to put this, but I do want to quickly shout out Benjamin Diskin who did a fantastic job with Eric. His voice fits perfectly and he played the part well. I truly believe a big part of why Eric is memorable is because of Benjamin's voice. It sticks out and it's memorable. You can easily pick his voice out of a crowd and that goes a long way. Till this day, if I hear his voice, I immediately think of Eric and get incredibly cautious of that character. It's kind of funny because, uh, spoiler for 13 Sentinels. It helped me see a twist early in that game because I did not trust his character. Man, Eric might have given me some minor PTSD or something. And with that, I think I'll end it there. Manipulative, cocky, scumbag, rash, insecure, Eric Sparrow is one of the greatest antagonists in video game history while somehow being nowhere close to the top in terms of what he actually did. I hope you as well hate Eric as much as I do because no one deserves it more. If you somehow made it all the way here, then I can't thank you enough for sticking with me. I know I started getting rambly and was really reaching at times, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And if you did enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe. I don't know if I'll do a long video again anytime soon, but I did have a good time making this one, so who knows. Maybe I'll do one on Jimmy or something. We also have a Patreon if you want to support us even more, but don't feel obligated to. Though, I mean, how many people are watching this video still? Uh, before you hit a twist over your least favorite person, have a good day.